Let's bring in field meteorologist Brett Adair. He's a, he's a man that has been in pursuit of many storms. He's obviously helped out a lot of folks uh, over the past week. I want to talk to Brett on the phone now from Mississippi. Brett, you've been tracking this ferocious, massive storm system throughout the day today. I know you spent a good portion of the day today in Arkansas with that tornado that moved through West Little Rock. We also had uh, the awful, awful indications farther off to the, the east from there. What can you tell us about what you've seen today? Uh, man, it, it was unreal. Um, you know, we were on that initial tornado that uh, – a tornado warned storm that was going into West Little Rock. We were, you know, basically feeding video out from that location there uh, on the west side of town, just off of 4:30, and uh, we we watched that whole thing go through the process of tornado genesis. And unfortunately, when it did, it it was crossing over a hill. It's a little, you know, there's a little hilly terrain there with uh, the Ozarks not too far away, and uh, we watched that tornado basically touch down. Uh, in neighborhoods in a very residential area. And when it touched down, it literally took no time to go from like zero to 60. And it started doing damage, throwing debris in the air. We saw pieces of plywood and we positioned ourselves. We had to come in from the north on 430 going south toward Arkadelphia. And uh, we pulled off and we ended up being at the intercept point where that tornado crossed the 430 corridor before it traversed up into North Little Rock and went toward basically the National Weather Service office. So uh, we were on that tornado for a long time, uh, assisted some, some motorists there. There were cars that were thrown and rolled off the highway there just to make sure that they were okay. Some flipped vehicles, um, a lot of different damage things that you'll see over the coming days. And then uh, the next storm that came into the South Metro went tornado warned again, and that's the one that ended up going into wind. Uh, and we, we were on it. We, we were right behind that tornado as it went through town. And unfortunately, we were on the, I believe, the 64 corridor there that went toward Earl and Parkin and, you know, saw all the damage there, several destroyed homes that we came up on power lines, you know, people just in shock, wandering the streets. And uh, we, were, we were trying to do some, some search and rescue. So we threw our thrown up to see if we could see anybody because, I mean, literally the tornado crossed. 60 to, 60 to 90 seconds before we arrived there, and we could still see that big, massive tornado off in the distance, you know, chewing the landscape up to the east. So it, it's been a surreal day, man. And, uh, you know, again, this is one of those situations we've been talking about. Uh, it was warned really well and forecast really well, too. Uh, when you get these individualized thunderstorms like this and they have all the energy to feed off of versus like a line of storms, you can get these really long track and destructive tornadoes. We're, we're watching. I, I know you're with us on the phone. I'm not sure if you can see our feed, but we've been watching some of the video that you've captured so far today that, out of Little Rock, exactly what you're describing with the tornado going up and over the hillside, which was incredibly ominous to watch that and that huge swath of debris that was being lofted up. But we also saw that heartbreaking drone video out of wind. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about what you saw in wind. Sadly, we have heard that they, there is loss of life. The high school there completely d destroyed. Some, some of the pictures we saw of just the turf on the high school field just completely ripped up by that tornado. What was that like as you moved in, into the town of Wynn? Well, you know, some of those areas there at the time that we came in were impassable. So we did not get down into the downtown section itself to see exactly what that was like. We were basically going through this. this is something I don't recommend even storm chasers, storm tractors do. We had to come in through the backside, through the core of the storm to, to basically be able to get there close to the tornado, which we've got technology in the vehicle. And that allows us to do that safely. But uh, we, we had to do that, and we weren't able to see a lot because the rain was so blinding on the backside. But we had some indications from some other storm trackers and spotters that there was a tornado down on the west side of wind, a small tornado to begin with. But, man, it came into the town, and it widened and strengthened dramatically. And then seeing those images of the, the high school and the train derailment there, and uh, knowing that we've got loss of life, you know, again, uh, this is two Fridays in a row, unfortunately, where we've dealt with this. The only silver lining so far um, down in this area 
is a lot of that took place during the day. We're hopeful that we can get some of this to wind down because, you know, there was a lot, a lot more people awake and alert and uh, versus being asleep. So yes. I'm, I'm hopeful that these tornado warnings that are ongoing now, we can get some of these to wind down. But unfortunately, it looks like we've still got a long night ahead across portions of the uh, uh, Ohio Valley into the deep south. Yeah, Brett, before we let you go, I just wanted to ask you quickly. You mentioned a week ago what we were tracking, devastation across Mississippi. The overall scale of this, at least when we're talking about geographical distance, even larger than the storm system we had last week. And now we're looking ahead to early next week, Tuesday, the severe weather threat that's been highlighted for days already by the Storm Prediction Center. What are your thoughts so far as we've moved into the very beginning of this springtime severe weather season about all this activity? Well, Ian, we have, you know, some of these features that we look at in extended range forecasting. And what we've been looking at recently, we have some teleconnectors. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been in a La Nina phase. Uh, basically, the Pacific waters have been really cool at the surface and subsurface over the last couple of years. And we're trending toward an El Nino. So we're kind of in between cycles now. And believe it or not, that has impacts on our jet stream. It, uh, the atmosphere is a fluid, and uh, the oceans interact with the atmosphere. And the jet stream, for whatever reason, in this neutral phase gets more active and it gets further south. And we're seeing that in this situation where it looks like we're going to have multiple powerful systems that are going to move across portions of the southern plains, the middle and lower Mississippi Valley region. And again, as he mentioned, looks like basically we reload after today, and then we have to deal with this again by early to middle of next week. No question. We've seen what that's done on the West Coast, these painfully energetic dips in the jet stream. And we've got another one in the extended forecast. Field meteorologist Brett Adair, always great to, to have some of your insight, the pictures th that you've showed us today. Hopefully we can move through next week w w with nothing like what we've seen in the past couple. Thanks for being with us here on Fox Weather. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.